Say you have a large spacecraft in orbit and you need to change its orientation or provide a small burst of thrust to push a spacecraft in the right direction for a slow docking. This is where reaction control thrusters come in. Pre reaction control thrusters, or RCS thrusters for short, are tiny, low-thrust engines used to perform precise orbital maneuvers, like controlling spacecraft attitude, doing small orbital maneuvers, and docking maneuvers. Since RCS thrusters need to be lit and relit maybe dozens of times in flight, they must be simple and reliable. They often use hypergolic propellants, like monomethyl hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide, used on the RCS on the Apollo service module, or monopropellant, like hydrogen peroxide, meaning they don't need complex ignition systems that other engines have that could break in flight. One consequence of this is that reaction control thrusters have a very low specific impulse, but this isn't a big issue since these thrusters are very small and simplicity is more valuable than efficiency in this scenario. RCS thrusters virtually never use turbo pumps, since turbo pumps are heavy, V, complex, and yet another system that can break. Instead, reaction control thrusters are typically pressure-fed. Of course, those are just the average reaction control thrusters. There are other fuels and systems used. The th there are the thrusters in the Falcon 9, which are used to control attitude during coast phases. These thrusters use cold nitrogen gas under pressure and simply shoot out nitrogen to change the attitude of the rocket. But by far the most interesting RCS isn't even on a spacecraft. It's on the Harrier jump jet. The Harrier is a VTOL, or a vertical takeoff or landing airplane, and during its vertical takeoff, it can't use traditional aero surfaces, since the air isn't moving over the wings. The jet instead uses bleed air, or air from the compressors in the engine, to power its reaction control system. It has thrusters on the nose, tail, and wingtips to control pitch, roll, and yaw. The thrusters are then turned off at high speeds when the plane can start using the normal aero surfaces. Reaction control thrusters are far from the only way to a spacecraft can control itself. Another common way to control spacecraft is reaction wheels. Reaction wheels use reaction force, aka just Newton's third law, to spin a spacecraft. A motor is used to spin the wheel one way, and the reaction force turns the spacecraft the other way. Reaction wheels allow for very precise control, but unlike RCS thrusters, they can't actually propel a spacecraft, only change the attitude of the craft. Hopefully, you learned something valuable. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, and goodbye.